So in this video, we're going to be talking about the junction capacitance of a PN junction or a PN junction diode. Uh, same, same difference. Um, so in the last video, we talked about the diffusion capacitance or the capacitance that was due to these excess carriers. This is the P side, this is the N side. The diffusion capacitance was due to these excess injected carriers, delta N, and it was due to that varying uh, as you applied a differing voltage to the, to the diode. Uh, speaking of which, let's add that voltage in right here. Um, and I, I also mentioned that we're also going to have a capacitance that's due to this depletion region, because we know the depletion region changes, the width of the depletion region changes as a function of the voltage applied to the diode. So the amount of charge exposed uh, within this depletion region is also going to change. Um, so that's, you might not think of it as us adding charge to this junction because the charges are in fact immobile ions, but we're dragging back the depletion region so that we're exposing more charges. So it's as if um, we were adding more charges, even though all we're doing is uh, exposing negative and positive charges. So we saw the general procedure for calculating capacitance in the last video. Uh, we can just define it as a change in charge uh, that occurs in response to a change in voltage. And so here, uh, the charge, uh, the change in charge is fairly easy to calculate um, because we know that the total charge in a given region, so let's say the, let's talk about the N region first. Now, if we want to calculate the total charge within the N region, we need to kind of blow it up into three dimensions. So let's take a look at this three-dimensional N region. Um, so we've got a bunch of positive charges in here, which are just our charged ions. Uh, we know that the N region has a certain width associated with it, uh, Xn. It's got a certain cross-sectional area A. Um, each one of these charges contributes Q amount of charge and their density is ND. So putting all these things together, uh, the total charge Q is just the charge per, um, per ion times the density of ions multiplied by the volume or Xn times the area. And so this is an expression, uh, this gives us the charge density times the volume. That's a more general expression for the charge. And so similarly, if we wanted to write delta Q, uh, well, if we change the voltage, what's going to change about this? Well, we know that the electronic charge isn't gonna change. That's a constant of nature. Uh, you couldn't change it if you tried. Um, we know that the, ND, the donor density, isn't going to change. That's just a function of the doping. Um, we know that the area, the cross-sectional area, isn't, isn't going to change because that's just geometry. But uh, we know that the depletion region is actually itself a function of the voltage. So we're going to get some additional um, delta Xn here. So if we're interested in the total delta Q within this region, we just need to multiply by delta Xn. So this is what we want to find. And even more specifically, we want to find delta Xn as a function of delta V, and ideally a linear function if we want this to be a linear capacitor. So how do we do that? Um, well, we can do it just by blindly writing out, uh, we, we can do just what we did last time. We just plug in two different values of V and then find the difference between them. So we know we have an expression for Xn. It's just this ugly behemoth, uh, two epsilon silicon times VBI minus VD, where VD is the forward voltage. You could write it as plus VR if you wanted to. 
In fact, I think I, I think I will do that here just because it's going to make our lives easier in terms of not having to worry about minus signs. Um, and then on the bottom, we've got Q N D times one plus N D over N A. Now I want to just figure out what is the dependence of this expression on the voltage. Well, we could separate out this uh, this expression into two different ones. So we could say xn uh, as a function of v or uh, vr um, is just all the constants. So 2 times epsilon silicon divided by qnd 1 plus nd over na uh, multiplied by square root of vbi plus vr. And that's a little cleaner. Uh, that, that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. Now, what happens if I add a little bit of voltage to this delta V? Uh, what happens when I turn VR into VR plus delta V? Uh, well, I'm going to get this same expression down here, so I'm not going to rewrite that. But VBI plus VR turns into VBI plus VR plus delta V. And this is this is better, but we can we can make it a little cleaner. And so I'm going to show you one of my favorite algebraic tricks of all time, uh, factoring out things that aren't actually there. So, so we can actually factor this term into two different terms. Uh, one is just VBI plus VR, and the other one needs to be uh, well. When you multiply them together, you need to get a VBI plus VR, so you need to have a 1. Uh, and then you need a delta V, or you can just multiply that by 1 plus delta V over VBI plus VR. So this is kind of a cheating way to uh, factor out the dependence on uh, a single variable. And the really cool part about this is that if we rewrite the full expression, uh, for xn of vr plus delta v. Uh, it's equal to all these constants, q and d, 1 plus nd over na. Oops, I said uh, na. Um, except this whole thing, um, vbi plus vr times all the constants we had out front, this is just xn naught. This is our depletion region with without applying an additional voltage. So it's xn naught times 1 plus delta V over VBI plus VR. And this is so much cleaner uh, and so much easier to work with than our original expression. So this is why I love this little algebraic trick, uh, because it lets you factor things. Um, and basically, it lets you do magic with algebra. So now if we're interested in delta xn, and we are, uh, that's just xn of some voltage plus delta V uh, minus Xn at the initial voltage. Well, we know that this is just the initial depletion region width uh, because we're not applying any additional voltage. And we know this, we've got a nice clean expression that we just derived for it. Uh, Xn naught times one plus delta V over VBI plus VR. And so we need to subtract xn naught from this. Well, okay, um, so this is delta xn as a function of delta v. And unfortunately, it's a nonlinear function of delta v. And we said we wanted a linear function of delta v so that we could define a linear capacitance. So we're going to expand this with a Taylor series. And we're going to truncate that Taylor series. This is a really common uh, a common way of making approximations in electrical engineering that you should get very comfortable with. Um, so we can rewrite this using a Taylor series as 1 plus 1 half uh, times delta V over VBI plus VR. And we're going to ignore all the higher order terms. We're going to pretend that they don't exist. So we're just, we just care about the linear term. And then we need to subtract X and naught, or since I've already factored out X and naught, we just subtract 1. And so that's absolutely beautiful. That leaves us with this super simple expression, uh, xn naught times 1 half delta V over VBI plus VR. This is delta xn 
as a linear function of delta v. And keep in mind, this is approximate, but this is gonna let us define a capacitance. So if we go back to our original expression for delta q, and uh, let's actually not, let's actually try and not look at that expression. Let's try and remember what it should be. Uh, what should delta q be? Well, charge is just charge density times the volume, or delta q should be the charge density times the change in volume. And the charge density is just the electronic charge times the ion density. And the change in volume is just the area times delta xn. So that's our equation for delta q. And so if we plug in xn as a function of delta v, uh, just do some little algebra here, rewrite the stuff. xn naught times one half delta v over vbi plus vr. And so if we divide both sides by delta v, we get what we wanted, the capacitance. And this is called the junction capacitance. If it were up to me, I would call it the depletion capacitance, but uh, this was the original name given to it and it's sort of stuck. So we need to cancel that delta v out. And if we, uh, if we just erase this to make it a little prettier, we have our final expression for the junction capacitance. And if you were playing along, you might have noticed that we only worried about uh, the depletion region on the N side, and we're only worrying about the charge similarly on the N side. Uh, but why are we allowed to do this? Well, remember in deriving the um, e these equations for the PN junction, we assumed that the charge was going to be balanced on both sides or that charge neutrality was going to be maintained in this situation. So there's gonna be no net charge within our semiconductor. And so this is why we can say that any charge uh, delta Q on this side must be accompanied by a minus delta Q charge on this side. Or if we have a capacitor, We've got a plus delta Q charge on this side, a minus delta Q charge on this side. And we only care about the uh, one of these charges. We don't need both of these charges together. And so we can rewrite the expression if we want in terms of the depletion region on the P side, uh, but you'll end up getting the same answer both ways. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below. And I'll see you next time.